2 of EK Expo at Computex 2024. This day is what custom loop enthusiasts among you have been waiting for. We're about to stroll around the EK booth and show you what's hiding inside some pretty insane PC builds. Later on, we will also unveil something interesting for everyone relying on workstations. But right now, I will hand the mic over to Joe, our lead R&D designer, because our Velocity lineup of CPU water blocks is entering its third era. It's great to be joining you from Taipei. Welcome to EK's booth, and let's get straight in with a new CPU block. But first, just check out this lineage, 20 years of EK CPU blocks going right back to an extremely early uh, EK Wave prototype. This is one of the oldest blocks in EK's archive. Uh, following on from that, again, another prototype block. This one, instead of having end mode slots, has an array of pins uh, and an interlocking plate for like, effectively lots of tiny jet plates. The next is the first water block that has a conventional, what, what's now known to be a conventional split flow cooling engine with microfins. Uh, following up from that is the Supreme HF, a high flow variation seen here in nickel, and a Supreme LTX. This is actually from uh, Kit. Uh, I'm the first to introduce the CSQ design, if you remember it, so it's Frosted Plexi CSQ. And then my personal favorite, my first ever CPU block, the EK Supremacy. So this is when EK was reaching thousands of users uh, and quintessentially the stereotypical CPU block. Uh, that was refreshed during its life to the EK Supremacy Evo, one of the first blocks to feature uh, a molded insert. We'll be coming back to that. Uh, and the first to be truly socket specific that had different internals for different sockets. That insert was changed out. and. The last universal CPU block we made was the EK Quantum Velocity, the first to feature RGB by default. And here we are, the Velocity 3. So our third generation Quantum Velocity CPU block. Uh, quite remarkably, this is a, a universal block that features all of the uh, performance aspects of the individual blocks, all packaged together in one. So this has an insert that can be moved into multiple places depending on the socket. So it's seen here set up with vertical ports for Intel. Uh, you can also rotate the top and then you would have horizontal ports on Intel. But the internals, the direction of the fins, the direction of the jet plate would remain in the same place. So you could have uh, goofy ports or vertical ports, whichever you prefer. And you could also have either flow direction. So uh, since it's symmetrical, you can swap that over, have the flow coming in top or bottom, left or right. But what gets really interesting is when you set this up for AMD AM5. Uh, in that way, you can also then rotate the cold plate so the fins become vertical on the CPU and rotate the insert as well so the jet plate's horizontal. And when the jet orifice is horizontal, you can also flip the insert inside and that offsets where the entrance uh, to the cold plate is, where the inlet orifice is on the cold plate. And you can run the offset needed for AMD's chiplets, but the block will be in a conventional place. Because the insert has two holes, again, uh, you can leave the fins in the vertical orientation, which is best for AM5, and rotate the top. So it goes back to having horizontal ports. So a lot of stuff in one. Uh, this will not be a replacement to the big Velocity 2 blocks we're used to, but a new lower entry point, uh, a little lower on the price and available in the next quarter. So let's go and check this out in a build. And what better place to check out the Velocity 3 than in the EK Quantum X no case? You may remember this build from CES, and that was the first time we showed it, and it was really an illustration of just how far we could push things, how light we could make the case, and how much we could hide it. And in doing so, that puts as much of the hardware on show as possible. Uh, we have made a few revisions, and it's now fitted out for Asus's BTF standard. So uh, the changes that were made were the motherboard tray was adjusted to make clearance for all of the connectors. Uh, despite being completely hollow, there were still some things in the way. 
Uh, there's an additional brace just to strengthen the motherboard tray from the previous version. And of course, support for horizontal GPUs. So we can use an advanced BTF card with the BTF case. So you will have also noticed that this GPU block has no space for the power connector. This is a BTF dedicated GPU block and this is a brand new Vector2 EVO, which will be launching in three physical variations, an active backplate set, an individual block, and an individual block for BTF. So you'll have the choice of if you have the power connector hole or not. Uh, this will fit the 4080 and 4090 as two different models, uh, the Strix and the Tough. Of course, there's only a Strix 4090 for the BTF version. Uh, other changes to this block that make it an EVO are internal sealing of all the channels. So it has an elaborate two-piece O-ring that seals every boundary between the coolant on the internals of the block. So there's no coolant leakage and you can use any coolant you want. There'll be no internal stains from it. Uh, and it's also considerably shorter than the previous block. The Acetal standout has been reduced in length and the badge moved onto the backplate and the PCB respectively. So now you have a much shorter block that's tight to the motherboard. And we also move the terminal back to the left side, uh, which is a bit friendlier for the Matrix 7 cases and the Matrix 7 monoblocks. Things line up much better uh, and it looks a bit more in proportion. So as we mentioned earlier, the Velocity 3, and that's joined by the new Momentum 2 for DDDR5. So this is a dedicated DDR4, DDDR5 RAM block. Uh, it's our first RAM block to feature RGB and Flexi and a view to the coolant, uh, and our first to comply with the Matrix 7 standard. So it's very elegantly in introduced with the other Matrix 7 fittings that it fits with the distribution plate in this case. Uh, we're running it in parallel because the new CPU block is so unrestrictive uh, that this setup just looks the cleanest and we got a chance to show a few more fittings. We're using, again, the carbon fiber tube from CES and all the other great stuff. We also toned back the color scheme. Uh, we're now running black fittings instead of the rose gold and got rid of the rainbows and really tried to stealth it out versus the CES build so it takes on a new tone and it's uh, more fitting for our destination in Taipei. So the last thing to check out with me today are the remaining EK Quantum Torque fittings that we'll be adding to the portfolio. First of which is a telescopic extender fitting. So these can slide from 28 to 42 millimeters and they can also rotate freely. Uh, you see here a uh, male to female and there is also a male-male variation for fitting between two uh, closely fitted objects. Next up are our very first QDC fittings that are produced by us. So these have EK Quantum Talk colors and finishes, knurling patterns, and exactly what you would expect. They come in pairs, so they're actually directional. Uh, here's the male-female pair. If they were both installed on one block, then you have the female side for your tube fitting, presumably soft tube fitting, uh, and they release in opposing directions so that you can't mix them up, but they go back together in their pair. We have a black fitting to match our black variation and a stainless steel fitting which matches EK Quantum Torque nickel. And the final fitting is the bypass valve. We'll see more of this later when it comes up in our future product line and how it applies with uh, some of our other new products. Uh, but in essence, this allows you to add an additional circuit to your loop or also remove it. So uh, you can see that the knob in the middle has multiple positions. It can, it can rest at every 45 degree interval, so it can rest in eight positions. Uh, and the inscriptions mark what, what the direction of the flow is. So in this position, the flow passes directly through the fitting and rotates at 90 degrees, it passes directly vertical, but in this direction, it's obstructed. There's also a possibility to move at 45 degrees. And in this way, 
you have two flow paths. One that goes through in this direction and one that goes through in this direction. So effectively, two routes diagonally. Uh, and in this way, you can add this to add an additional piece to the loop without any restriction. So for example, if you wanted to connect an external radiator, uh, you could add two quick disconnects here, clip on the external radiator, and let the loop flow throughout that radiator. Uh, it could have an additional pump inside or whatever would be needed uh, to overcome the restriction of the QDCs. But when you remove that, when you unclip that, instead of just putting a loop on those uh, QDC fittings, you can instead change the position back to a straight line and have unrestricted flow through the entire loop. There are a number of other applications that we'll get to, uh, one of which is draining and filling. So you can see here it's equipped with a plug and a drain valve. And we anticipate that you could use a filling bottle to apply a vacuum to one side of the loop, move it into its 45 degree position and open the opposing stop plug to let the air in. So in that way, coolant would be drawn out from one way, air would come in the other and you could effectively drain the entire loop from any point. It will also connect to our DFF machine that you'll be seeing later. So check what it can do in that situation. Welcome back to the EK booth, where I will now be joined by Marco Kranjac, EK's lead R&D lab technician, and he has a little something in store for you. Thank you, Anna, and for everybody watching. What we have here is a super micro conversion kit. Uh, the kit allows the customer to liquid cool one of the Supermicro's most popular chassis. Uh, the kit contains a 360 radiator on top and a P360 uh, in the front. It also has seven fans, so three on top, three in the front and one in the back. The rest of the kit is modular. The first choice that the customer needs to make is to choose between one of these two units, so the X3 and the X6. This is a combination of a manifold D5 pump and a reservoir. Its compact tower-like design allows it to be mounted into a variety of cases. Uh, the, rest of the, the rest of the kit is up to the user. Uh, it is defined by the hardware that the user chooses in their build. So we have uh, an array of GPUs and CPUs that the customer can choose. So over here we have our multi-GPU build showing off the X6 manifold combo um, and the way it can be mounted so that the QDCs face the camera as before they were facing the GPU. So this is the versatility that comes with the tower-like compact design. So it makes it really easy to assemble such a loop. You just plug the QDCs in and that's it, you're good to go. And also here we have our 360 uh, Pro radiator and we have a 480 over here, which is also our new line. Um, so that's about it. Thank you, Anna. Back to you. And here we are at the very end of Computex and EK Expo Day 2. A little tired, but still very much buzzed from all the activity at the EK booth. But before I say my goodbyes, my colleague, Miha Kolenz, will speak to another special guest of ours, Silverstone's very own Sean Chow. Hello, my name is Miha. I'm coming from EK. Here is my colleague, Sean, uh, our future customer from Silverstone Tech. So today we will actually start to discuss a little bit uh, about our water cooling solution for enterprise division. So that's mean for enterprise water cooling solution. Uh, I would like to first ask you why you decided to go with a water cooling system in this uh, build. Okay, so since, um, since last Computex, um, our, our focus at Silverstone has slightly shifted to um, more workstation orientated um, case designs okay. due to the prevalence of AI and AI accelerated applications. And this surge in, um, this surge in computational, comp computational power has led us to move to liquid cooling, which um, 
due to the fact that they provide many benefits, but the main reason being the expandability of custom liquid cooling. And that, that allows me to achieve, um, that allow me to showcase the cases, um, our, our showcases full, full um, potential and capabilities. Yep. Thank you very much. And uh, what about, what do you think about the customer? They will accept this solution, you know, Usually they want to have a conventional uh, air cooled air system. Now we are switching to the liquid cooling. Yep. More and more is popular getting in, especially in Europe. With this kind of, we face uh, with some customers who also with your products here. So what do you think about that? Well, I think with, um, with the benefits that liquid cooling provides and also with um, the demand of high, compute, high performance computing increasing, I think um, liquid cooling will be a standard um, household component going forward into the high computing world. Okay, I appreciate that. So, uh, for, the uh, for the end, uh, how you s uh, see the, our collaboration in the future? What do you think about it? Um, I think that it's a, it's a promising one and a mutually beneficial partnership. Um, combine, combine Silverstone's expertise with um, EK's liquid cooling prowess. I think it will result in what will later on become the art of server liquid cooling uh, ecosystem. Perfect. Thank you very much for that, Sean, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more. One last EK Expo episode awaits you tomorrow. Same time, same place, but a whole new different set of liquid cooling solutions. Don't miss it.